Hello everyone, Chris Parker here, and in this Topaz Photo AI version 2 tutorial, you're going to learn everything you need to know to get the most out of it, including how to use it and pro editing tips for fixing out of focus images, fixing motion blur, removing digital noise, sharpening, enhancing low res files, upscaling your images, and much more. You'll find timestamps for easy access to everything this tutorial covers in the description below. So if you're ready, let's do it. All right, so the first thing you have to do, of course, is install Topaz Photo AI 2. And if you're going to use it as a plugin, make sure to have your editing app closed before installing. And if you would like to try out Topaz Photo AI before buying, I've included a free trial link in the description below. It is an affiliate link and costs you nothing extra to use it, but it will help support my two kids if you decide to buy it. So thank you very much to all who have used it. All right, you can use Topaz Photo AI as a standalone app or as a plugin with editing software like Photoshop, Lightroom, Apple Photos, and Affinity Photo. So let's take a quick peek at the standalone app first, and then we'll use it as a plugin. Once you have Topaz Photo AI open, you can add images inside of Topaz by clicking and dragging them onto the interface or click this button to navigate to a folder of images to open them up. That way you can also access recent images via the right panel here. And then down here we have some user guides and some help using the software or just leave a question in the comments below and I'll help you out. All right, so there's a few ways to open up images when using it as a plugin. So in Photoshop, you want to go up to filter, scroll down to Topaz Labs and select Topaz Photo AI from here, and it will launch Topaz Photo AI. However, before you do that, I recommend duplicating the layer so that your edits are on the new layer in case you want to go back to the original. For example, if we select this background layer here and use command or control plus the letter J, we can duplicate it. Now we can go in and open up Topaz Photo AI. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we have this thing here called Autopilot. We'll talk about that in just a second. So once it's done applying its edits, it's sharpening the image. So let's go ahead and remove some noise. And just so we can see the edits after the fact, let's go ahead and do something I normally wouldn't recommend. I'm going to increase the strength to 100. And we're going to save this back to Adobe Photoshop. It's going to take a few seconds here to process, and then we'll see the edits being applied to that new layer. All right, let's go ahead and zoom in and you can definitely see it's over sharpened here, but that's okay. So the edits have been applied to this layer and there's the original layer. So this is how you work non-destructively. Now for Lightroom users, if you want to edit your original raw files, you can select one or more images. So let's go ahead and select all these files here. And then you can go up to file, scroll down to plugin extras and select process with Topaz Photo AI from here. And now personally, I'm not using Topaz for raw files at this time and would recommend using JPEG or TIFF files instead. But you can go ahead and try out the raw process to see how that works. Once you get through this video tutorial, you'll have a better understanding of how all the tools work. And then you can decide if you want to use raw or the TIFF or JPEG files. Now to access that part of the workflow, we're going to right click on any image and select edit in Topaz Photo AI. And then you get this new window here. By default, it's going to select this top option, but then down here at the bottom, you have to let Topaz know which of these settings you want to use once the edits are applied and saved back into Lightroom. Now these options, I'm going to show you which ones I prefer, but they are a personal preference. And I like to use TIFF files. You have some other options here as well. And I like to use 16 bit with Profoto RGB and a resolution of 300. Now, just so you know, if you choose these same options, the file sizes will be huge. They're well over 100 megabytes per file. So you can choose eight bits instead, and that file size will be smaller. Or if you need something even smaller, you can select a JPEG file. 
Now, the reason I choose these settings here, let's go back, TIFF, 16-bit, and the reason why I choose these settings here is they preserve more colors in the image and reduce the chance of banding or pixelization of the image after processing. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into Topaz Photo AI now by opening up these files inside of Topaz and it's preparing the files by creating a TIFF file of each of the files that I selected. Now, the first thing you're going to notice when Topaz opens is Autopilot. Right here, we have this little window. It's a status of the progress of Autopilot, and we're gonna talk more about that in just a second. But first, let's go ahead and take a quick peek around the interface so you know where everything is. Now, the Topaz Photo AI interface is divided into three sections. The largest section displays a preview of your image, and there are a couple of ways to view before and afters of the edits that you apply, which is located down here in the second part of the interface, which is this bottom panel here, and then we have a right panel here on the right side. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to this image while I show you the before and after option. So this first option here is going to apply all the edits and make it visible on the entire image. The second option is going to divide it up. So the left side is the before, the right side is after. And for me, this particular tool or this preview was a little addicting at first because I couldn't believe how great of a job Topaz Photo AI was in improving my images and making it sharper and removing noise. So if you click on it, you can drag it left and right to see the before and after. And check out the eyes and the beak and the feathers are much sharper and that noise is gone. Pretty awesome if you ask me. All right, so the third option is just going to show you the before and after side by side. Before is on the left, the edited is on the right. We also have some options here to zoom in and out as needed. And then we have these thumbnails in the bottom panel as well. If you're not seeing these, go ahead and click right here to show or hide as needed. Now these thumbnails are providing some information about them in regards to what edits were being applied, if any, and there's a hidden menu in there for batch processing. So let's check this out before we move into the editing tools. So if we take a look at this first image here, there's two icons and the one next to it has none. So this first one here has edits applied to it and this one has not. This one has, and then these last three have no edits applied. Now each one of them has a green pilot, which basically means that autopilot is already taking a look ahead and kind of deciding what type of edits it should apply to make your image better. Now, when we go into the right panel here, you're gonna see those green dots as well, indicating that Autopilot had applied specific types of edits, and it's just kind of showing you which edits it's applying, and we'll see that in just a moment. Now, the other thing you'll see when you hover over a thumbnail is the actual edits being applied and the percentages used for each editing tool. So in this case, we have remove noise and sharpen. Sharpen is in green, and that means that was the autopilot setting that it suggested for this particular image in regards to sharpening. It didn't think noise reduction was needed, so it didn't apply that automatically. I added that after. Now, if you take a look at sharpen, we have lens blur and two percentages, and it's in white. And that's because I applied these settings manually. If I hadn't, they would be in green as well. Now, the hidden menu is in these three dots. If we click on it, we'll get this pop-up menu here, and there's some different options here. Now, under Apply, we have Current Settings to All. This is your batch processing tool that will take all the edits for that particular image and apply it to all the other images that are open, which is perfect when you wanna copy edits from one to another when you have images that were shot at the same location with the same lighting and the same camera settings. And this way you can process multiple images much faster versus doing them one at a time. Pretty awesome. All right, now in the right panel here, we have a navigator window. Let's go ahead and go back to this screen here. 
and you can see we have a rectangle which indicates where we are currently zoomed in in the image preview. Now, if you need to navigate to another part of the image, you can either click on your image and drag, and you'll notice that this rectangle box will update as well with that new location. You can also click and drag the box this way if you need to review a different part of your image. Those are the two different ways that you can do it. And then under that, we have three little icons here. We have a crop tool, we have our select subject, and then it's showing whether or not faces were detected. It's currently grayed out, so no faces were detected. And if it does detect a face, it's going to apply different edit settings down here. Now we're gonna go into all three of these in more detail in just a second. Now, before we get into the rest of these tools, let's talk a little bit about autopilot because it's a very important part of Topaz Photo AI. It's basically the brains of autopilot. So let's take a deep dive into autopilot first. All right, so the purpose of autopilot is to analyze your image with its built-in AI to determine how much noise to remove, sharpen it, and make your image better overall. And it will automatically do this as soon as you open an image like I showed you before, or when you click on a thumbnail in the panel down here in the bottom. And of course, you're gonna have to wait for autopilot to analyze your image and apply each edit before you can manually edit the image. Now, as part of analyzing your image, it's also looking for any subjects in your image like people, pets, wildlife, or something else. And if it finds a person, again, like I mentioned before, it will turn on the face detected feature and will apply any edits to improve those faces. It can also detect multiple faces. Now, the cool thing is you can customize autopilot for your own needs. For example, let's say you like a specific type of adjustment and find you're using it all the time, but autopilot consistently picks something else. Well, you can go into preferences right up here in the top here, click on Topaz Photo AI, click on preferences, and then you can tell it, well, your preferences. Now, there are three sections here and the third one is for shortcuts. So this is gonna show you all the different shortcuts available in Topaz Photo AI. And then we have a general section, which has some basic options, and you can leave these settings on the defaults for now. Later, you may want to adjust these as you learn more about Topaz Photo AI and how you'll use it, and then you can adjust anything relevant to your workflow. Now, the autopilot section, is going to give you the precision and control over how it applies these edits automatically. Now, you may want to consider setting your default subject type here to portraits or landscapes if you shoot those primarily. Personally, I shoot a little bit of both and I have mine set to the default option. All right, after that, there's a few more options here and they're either going to have a slider or a menu or actually both. And this will give you more precision and control over how autopilot decides which image quality models to use. So each has additional choices via this drop down menu. And some will have this slider that will control how aggressive the AI is. Now, if you're new to Topaz Photo AI, I recommend leaving these settings at the default for now. And as you discover which settings work best with your images, you can then fine tune autopilot to match your expected results. And this will increase your productivity. Now, if you do change anything, make sure you come down here and click on save to save those changes. All right, now let's dive back into Topaz Photo AI and check out each of these image editing tools. All right, so this image I created around 20 years ago with my Fuji S2 and Autopilot has upscaled the image to around 12 megapixels. So if your image is below that size, it will automatically upscale to that size, around 12 megapixels. Now, in the process of upscaling, Topaz Photo AI will generate new pixels and will also remove some noise, some blur, and compression artifacts. Now, you can also upscale your image up to 6x with max or type in a number right here based on your needs. Now you have some options to fine tune the upscale for best results, which includes four different AI models. Now, according to the developers of Photo AI, 
Standard works great with images from older cameras, like this image, and smartphones. High fidelity is better for high quality images from modern cameras and smartphones. And then graphics is perfect for art or AI generated images. And then low resolution is ideal for low quality images. Now for best results, you'll have to try each of them. And after you edit some images, you will have a better idea of which of the four works best for your images. Also for a quick reminder of which one does what, just hover over this little icon here and then you're going to get that pop up menu telling you which each of the models does. Now just below those four AI models, you have these three sliders here for additional control if you're not happy with the auto edit. All right, let's go ahead and check out removing noise next. So removing noise is the one tool that I use on all my high ISO images and it comes in three flavors, normal, strong, and extreme. Now you might be wondering why I use Topaz Photo AI for denoise instead of Lightroom's AI noise reduction. Well, Photo AI has the advantage by providing three different AI models versus Lightroom's one and we have more control and precision over the strength, some minor to blur and recover original detail with these three sliders here. And all of this is going to result in a higher quality image with no noise. So let's go ahead and take a look at three different images and apply some denoise to them. So this first image here I created at an ISO of 1000. And in this case, the normal AI model is ideal for that ISO setting or lower. Now strong is better suited for images with a higher ISO like 1600 and a little higher like for this image here, which I created at an ISO of 4000. Now this next image here, I created this one at an ISO of 8000. So in that case, you might find that extreme works better. However, this AI noise reduction model is really aggressive and it will remove fine details. If you notice this, try using the recover original detail slider to bring back some of that detail. Now, if you find it's too aggressive and you're losing too much detail, I would go with strong instead. Now, for me personally, I like to use normal the majority of the time because it works for the majority of my images and I will typically increase or decrease the strength accordingly. All right, as of this recording, the Sharpen AI models comes with five options. So we have the standard V2 or version two, which is going to replace version one in the near future. If you still see both, standard V2 is supposed to create a higher quality Sharpen. And what you need to do until one replaces the other, you want to experiment with both to see which gives you the desired results. In essence, the standard AI sharpening models are designed for images with low to medium blur, and then strong is better for medium to high blur. Now here's the thing, a low to medium to high amount of blur is subjective and you'll have to experiment with all of these to see which provides the right amount of sharpening for your images. Now, my favorites are lens blur and motion blur, and I use them for 90% of my images. So check this out. Here's an image of my daughter where I misplaced the focus point, which ended up on her nose instead of her eye, resulting in an out of focus image, at least for the eye. And you always want to make sure the eyes are sharpest for portraits and wildlife. Now, once I created this image and I brought it into Lightroom, I noticed my mistake and was disappointed until I brought it into Topaz Photo AI and applied the lens blur. Check this out. It fixed it. How cool is that? I love it. All right. Next, we have motion blur. Let's go ahead and switch over to another image of my daughter. Let's go ahead and fit inside the window. 
and I used a very slow shutter speed or one that wasn't fast enough to freeze the action, which resulted in some motion blur, which you can see along her sneaker here, her clothing, along her face and her hair. And with motion blur, it's going to improve it drastically. It's not going to get rid of all of the motion blur, but enough to wear her skin, her eyes, and her clothing are much more defined than they were before applying motion blur. And like before, we have a couple of sliders here to further refine the amount of sharpening in our images. Now, another vital tool to use when using denoise and sharpening is the masking tool. So let's go ahead and check that out. All right, so previously I mentioned that Autopilot will search for a subject in your image and when it does, it will auto magically create a mask around the subject. I'm going to go ahead and go back to this image here. And if we go up here to this icon right here and hover over it, you're going to see this red overlay that represents the mask. Now there's only one problem. It's not perfect. So you'll have to adjust it as needed or maybe you only want to target the eyes and the eyebrows like I want for this particular image because the sharpening applied to her skin makes it look unnatural. So let's go ahead and move this over here like so. And I want to remove the mask or the sharpening on her skin and I just want to target her eye and eyebrows. And to do that, all we have to do is click on this select subject icon and that will reveal this new window here. All right, so the first option here is to change the subject for autopilot to search for and then it will update the mask accordingly. And if I select portrait, I don't think it's going to do any better than it already did. It selected all of her and didn't select the background or the leaves. So I'm just going to leave it at default. But what I do like to do is to increase the feathering from the default of 50 to 100. So I have a nice soft edge from where the edit is being applied to where it's not being applied. So we can use our refinement brush to add or subtract from the mask. So we can increase the brush size here to cover a larger area. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom out here just to show you real quick how this works. I'm going to click on subtract and let's increase the brush size so I can cover a larger area faster. So what I would do is I would come in and I would paint over the area where it should be removed from the edit like so. And then I would go in here with a smaller brush around her eye and her eyebrow to target that area more specifically. There is an AI brush that is supposed to be intelligent and it's supposed to target different areas of the image as you paint, but I don't find it to be very intelligent, which is why I prefer a regular brush. Once you're happy with your adjustments here, maybe you need to add back. You can do that as well. But once you're happy, go ahead and click apply and then that mask will be updated and then those edits will only be applied to that area of where that mask is currently located. All right, now let's check out recover faces and recover faces works best with low res files. Now this is a high res file. So I'm going to go back to this image here because it is low res and it also works well with upscaling. So if you upscale an image and have faces, try checking out recover faces to see if you can improve them even further with this AI model here. So once you have it turned on, you have a slider here for strength, which will increase or decrease the intensity of that enhancement of the face or faces. And if we take a look at the before and after, you can definitely see it's much cleaner and sharper than it was before. I think it needs to be just a little bit sharper. So I'm going to turn on lens blur and we now have more definition in our eyebrows. Her eyelashes are separated a little bit more and her face is overall sharper and cleaner than it was before without recover faces. So make sure to check that out if you have low res files. Next, we have preserve text. So if you have any text in your images, you can enhance that text to make it more legible if it's a little blurry or pixelated. However, Topaz Photo AI doesn't auto magically locate that text in the image. You have to give it a little bit of help. So we're going to turn on preserve text 
And once you turn it on, you're gonna get this little menu of options here to either add or subtract to the mask that you need to apply to your image. We have a brush size here. So all we have to do is paint over the text to let Topaz know this is where the text is and enhance this text format, please. Go ahead and click on apply and Topaz Photo AI will do its magic. And you have two AI models to choose from, low resolution, noisy compressed, and then a strength slider to increase or decrease the intensity of that enhancement. All right, I'm gonna go back to this image one more time. We have two more editing tools and then we're gonna take a look at the crop tool. So adjusting lighting and balance color are both in beta mode right now. They're not 100% perfect yet, but let's take a quick look at what these tools do so you can see how they work. And maybe you can use them for your images, maybe not. You can also give feedback while they're in beta mode to help the developers make these two editing tools even better. So adjusting lighting is going to fix the exposure in the image to make your image either brighter or darker. So to the left here, it's going to make your image brighter. To the right, it's going to make it darker. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off for now. Next, we have balance color. So if you have a color cast in your image, you can try and remove that with the temperature slider here. If you have a yellow color cast, slide it to the left to reduce that color cast and vice versa. If you have a blue color cast, slide it to the right to add a little bit of yellow to compensate for that color cast. And then if it's too intense, you can lower the opacity to tone it down just a little bit. All right, now let's check out the crop tool. I'm gonna go ahead and navigate to another image here and to activate the crop tool, go ahead and click on this icon right here and you'll get this interface with this nine grid box that will help us with composing our image after cropping. So we have some options here to change the aspect ratio with this drop down menu here. You can type in a custom amount here, or if you want to use one of these pre-made presets here, you can use that. These are pretty common types of aspect ratios. So if you want a four by five or an eight by 10, you can choose that one, or maybe a five by seven. Now, if you want to convert this to horizontal versus vertical, just click on this center icon right here and it will switch it around for you. Then you can grab a side or a corner to resize that to crop it as needed. Click inside to drag around your image to reposition your subject as needed. You can also click on this little icon here to use free transform, which simply means you can click and then resize the crop or the aspect ratio to a custom setting based on your image. So maybe I want something more cinematic like that. And then once you're happy with your new crop, go ahead and click on apply and then Topaz will adjust your image based on that crop. Now, the last thing we have to do before we quit the program is we need to click on this button down here to save all the images back into Lightroom. And it's going to automatically do that for us once you click on that. And then all these images will be saved into Lightroom for further processing or exporting as needed. For more tips on using Topaz Photo AI and pro editing video tutorials, check out this playlist next.